It's six o'clock on the 18th of March and in three days time we are going to have the official day of spring beginning which is the equinox and soon we will be into spring and summer. They say that time is like a river. You cannot touch the same water twice. Once you touch the water, it's gone forever. You're never likely to encounter that bit of water ever again. So let's make the most of our time because once it is gone, it's gone. I'm showing you this beautiful lily. It has been in bloom for more than 10 days and I grow other plants besides bonsai and look at it. It's an amaryllis with this very deep red color and it's been blooming as I say for 10 days and it's got another spike coming from the same bulb. So I'm really pleased with it. There is beauty in nature. Flowers and plants give you so much joy and enjoyment and delight. So this is what life is all about. And I'm so happy that those of us who engage with plants, with bonsai, we're engaging with nature and it gives us endless joy and pleasure. So without further ado, I'm going to walk around the nursery and give you a glimpse of what is going on because I've just noticed that all the flowers in bloom and very soon all the flowers will be over before you can say Jack Robinson. So let me walk across the nursery from my office and into the display area. The evergreens have given us so much pleasure right through the winter but it's time to show off the flowering trees. Flowering trees are so short-lived that the flowers only last a week or two and soon they will be gone. This magnolia has been here ever since I came to Herons. So I've been here 38 years and I reckon this tree was planted when this house was built in 1966. So this tree must be at least 60 years old. It stands about, I would say, uh, 20 foot high. And every year it is just covered with blossom. In fact, had I not cut off some of the branches to thin the tree out, there would be even more flower. Unfortunately, if you get frost, it will turn brown. But luckily this year we've had no frost so it is looking quite nice. Excuse the planes, we live under the flight path and you will always hear the planes, but I don't seem to hear it anymore. This is an old Korean hornbeam and I'm showing you this because look at the leaves coming out and some of the flowers are also coming out. Those little red tips are flower buds. They will set the seed for the hornbeam. I love larches because they are a deciduous tree so throughout the year you get a constant change of scenery. This is when the buds just start emerging and the little cones are there, little green ones. Some of them have purple cones as well and this massive tree is usually borrowed once a year for our Japanese friend for making his Japanese garden at the Chelsea Flower Show. And the leaves are just beginning to emerge. I'm now going to take you to show you some of our Forsythia. These Forsythia have been created from stumps that I dug out from the hedge in our garden maybe about 20 years ago when I was removing the hedge and this tree believe it or not has a trunk diameter of about, I would say, nearly 14, 15 inches. And the natural hollow 
has come from the wood rotting away. It is not carved at all. So there you are. I've shown this tree many times before because every year I show this. This is another little twig that I got out of the same hedge. And at this time of the year, these Fuji cherry are in bloom and they make delightful bonsai. Of course, as they get older and when the trunks get thicker, they become even more impressive. The crab apples are not yet in bloom. The crab apples are just beginning to flower. So this is also very pretty. When they flower, again, they only last about a couple of weeks. We've put the day shoujo maples out in the open because if you leave them to emerge under protection of a glass house, the red color doesn't last very long. But if you let the leaves emerge in the open, they stay a brilliant red for much, much longer. So I've got these two huge day shoujos in, under the shade netting and when it comes into leaf I will show you, show you this again even in this stage before the leaves emerge completely it is such a beautiful sight I've got other maples too these are the katsuras and ordinary mountain maples and they are in leaf as well these have been in the open all winter so they have not been protected at all. There's another stump of a Forsythia and look at that. What you can find just from digging in the hedge. Let me just take you through some of the other day shoujos that we have. Spring is all about colour, colour and spring flowers. What we call sights that delight the eye and the soul. Another view of this massive De Shoujo maple. This is one of the few trees that I've decided not to sell in a hurry. I've had it more than 30 years, imported originally from Japan and it's grown twice the size since I've had it. It is every bit a meter tall. Meanwhile, you can enjoy our junipers too. And this is a, they showed you that was made from a tree that we grew in the field, just grown big in the field. This shade netting provides a lot of cover for the junipers. So although they've been out here throughout the winter, they've stayed very green because the frost has not turned them brown. So there you are for you to enjoy this beautiful sight of all the Junipers, they're mainly Itoigawa, all of them. I might as well walk through all the junipers because they are so distinctive that it's worth having a look at them. This is the Itoigawa, which is grown on a rock. I had two of those. One I sold to a customer in Europe, but the other one I've kept. Look at that beautiful rock. And this is a Hinoki forest that 
my colleague Padma Priya made. Let me now walk and show you something else that I made a week ago. It's what I call the 10 minute creation and I'm very proud of it. I'm not proud because it was taken just 10 minutes, but because it was done spontaneously. That juniper, in case you was wondering why it is brown, it's the flowers. Can you see all the flowers at the end? Soon they will be bursting open and they will be scattering all the pollen. This is the piece I'm talking about. That is a large forest that I made last Sunday. Not this Sunday gone, but the previous Sunday. And it is just uh, four and four, eight larches, eight. So although it's an even number, who would say it's not beautiful? Keep apologizing, apologizing for the plane noise, but it can't be helped. They keep flying overhead. Life goes on. Let me just turn and show you these beautiful red apricot flowers. They're only two years from planting, but I hope it will make a big tree look at the blossom on that look at the blossom beautiful flowers absolutely beautiful and the name if you want to buy it is called prunus persica meld red meldred i have a white version as well and since i'm fairly near my own garden i'm going to just show you what the white apricot looks like. Those are the Zelkova trees in the background. What a sight, just the silhouette of the trees is beautiful. And I'm walking here to this white bush and I use it for cutting the branches. So each year I cut the branches hard back for flower ranging and it produces new shoots from which we get these beautiful flowers. They're double, double white. So unlike the uh, other wild shrubs, which you see in the English hedgerow, which is blackthorn, this is flowering apricot. It doesn't set fruit. It's only grown for the flowers. Ever so beautiful. And it's just absolutely covered with blossom. Covered with blossom. And I love my camellias too. I have lots of camellias all over the nursery. And they are just beginning to bloom. Some have been in bloom for quite a while. As it is approaching dusk, I thought I would video this at this time of the evening because you can hear the birds singing. So. In between the plain noise, I hope you can hear the birds twittering before they go to sleep. The planes are coming in one every minute. So please bear with me. I keep apologizing, but I can't help it. Even the moss on the ground looks beautiful. This is just plain moss. And the moss grows on this Arakawa. This rough bark maple, look at the moss.
now going to walk to the white cherry trees. I have several cherries. I think they're mainly Taihaku, the great white chief, what they called. And it is a pure white cherry, double flowers, and ever so beautiful. It is also scented, fairly scented. I see that we also have a winter flowering cherry. This is a Puna subhotella, which is a pink cherry that blooms in the winter time. It is in flower continuously from November right up to March and even early April. These were planted when they were very tiny. And this cherry tree was planted about 30 years ago. I let it grow in this weird shape. I don't prune it too much because I just leave the branches to do their own thing. But I need to watch the weight of it in case it gets too heavy and it might collapse. So this is still in bud. So it's not yet fully open. I'll come back again when it is more open. Today is the 21st of March and it's officially the first day of spring. I showed a video not so long ago when I took videos of the spring walk on the 7th of March, exactly a fortnight ago. And when I took that video, this magnolia was not even in bloom. Two weeks on, look at it. All the petals are falling and the flowers are almost over. So in two weeks, what a lot can change. And as they say, the beauty of nature is that you get beauty in a fleeting moment and it is gone. They say that time is like a river and once you touch the water, you cannot touch it again. So enjoy the moment. While I'm out in the front garden, I will just show you this mighty great uh, tree that I dug up. I didn't dig up, I pruned it hard in September, if you remember. This is that Exocorda the Bride, which is only a garden shrub. And I had no shoots on it. And literally in two weeks, it is budding all over the place. I'm going to dig it up because I'm not going to leave it in the ground forever. So this tree is going to come up. Let me now walk to some other parts of the nursery. I'll trace the same route that I took last time so that you can compare what happens in exactly two weeks. Another view of this magnolia. It's a multi-trunk tree. When I came to Herons in 1985-86, I saw this beautiful tree and it reminded me of a multi-trunk clump style maple. So it's been here for all the 38 years that I've lived at Herons and I dare say it was planted in 1966 when this house was built. Let me look at it from the other side, you'll get a better view. I'll take another shot when the sun shines because the sun is not shining today. So look at this tree. As I say, in literally two weeks, two weeks ago it had only buds which were just emerging and now the, all the flowers have opened 
and the petals are falling fast and the petals falling on my beautiful bonsai I haven't the heart to remove the petals but it does look nice it's got its own charm so let's have a look at some of the trees again as I say I'm going to trace the same route and walk that I took so that you can compare what has happened in exactly two weeks it's quite incredible things change so fast look at it this big larch when I showed it two weeks ago it was barely in bud and now it is covered in its new shoots completely covered isn't that a beautiful sight I'm now going to walk through I did show the crab apples they were not in bud and look at the buds now they are going to be opening literally within the next day and the cherry blossom wasn't in bloom two weeks ago and now the flowers are almost finished and my forsyth there two weeks ago wasn't open and now it is in full bloom but this forsyth there has never looked so good look at it And sadly these flowers only last a couple of weeks and that dishojo, one of my large homemade dishojos, that is a leaf. I will show you some more dishojos. That's another large dishojo that I have. That one is almost, I would say 90 centimeter tall. I'll take it again when it is in full leaf. The leaves are only just emerging. These are the Katsuras. Suddenly everything oh, blew me. More of this Fuji cherry called Kojo no Mai. The Chinese larch come out into leaf in quite a different way from the Japanese larch. Let me spin round and show you all our other trees. It's a Hinoki forest. These are our great big Itoigawa junipers. Chinese quince, these are the ones which have like one and two inch diameter trunks and they are coming into flower. Beautiful flower. They're relatively cheap, not expensive trees. Just spin around and look at some of these maples. This maple has not been protected throughout the winter. It's been out all winter and lo and behold all the leaves are emerging. And this is only the 21st of March. Again some of these the shojos have also been in the open. So they're coming out. This delicate red only lasts about a month at most and then the leaves turn a darkish red and eventually turns green in the summer. So those of you who purchase De Shoujo don't expect the tree to remain red like this throughout the year. You just got to enjoy it while it is this color. show you the juniper flowers just about to release the pollen let me just flick it and you'll see the pollen come out
This is a piece I made only three days ago. Late on Sunday evening. I made this group. This is going to be a separate video. And this one I made the previous Sunday. So this was made only like 10 days ago. Just a few simple larches and you get this lovely composition. A new plant that I've been growing is this flowering apricot called Persica, Prunus Persica Meldred. Look at it, beautiful double pink flowers. I planted it only last year and the trunk diameter is only a finger thick. Hopefully in a few years they'll become a big tree. That's a crab apple that I've been growing from seed. And this tree is about 10 years old, it's about 15 feet tall from seed. And look at it. I'm going to another part of the garden because I've got a white um, ornamental plum, some people call it, but it's in white double flowered. Because it was warm yesterday, we mowed the grass for the first time. So hopefully spring will be in full force. These are the maples, dried maples that we leave out here all year. And they are leafing as well. I didn't protect them this year because the winter was relatively mild. That's my huge Magnolia grandiflora. And let me come to this double flowered almond blossom. I think it's, some people call it a peach blossom. And I grow this only for cutting the flowers. I try to cut it hard back so that the young shoots will ripen in the summer and produce these lovely flowers. I've already given about a third of the tree away in cut branches to various people who do flower arranging. The Zelkovas and big maples in the ground haven't leafed yet, but I'll follow that through as well as and when they emerge. So I remember when I did this video exactly 14 days ago, these magnolias were not in flower and now they're just beginning to emerge. Although the Japanese call this the kobus, it is probably just the word for magnolia, but this is a stellata type magnolia and the trunks are about four inches in diameter, huge trunks. And that's a very nice day shoujo at the back. I did show the Japanese hawthorn, I'll show them again, they're in leaf but no sign of flower yet. When they flower, I'll film it again. At this time of the year, I must record the progress of the day shoujo because as I said earlier, the changes in leaf color are so rapid that within a flash of an eye, they are over and gone. That one at the back is one of our field-grown de shoujo. We grow them in the field and train them ourselves. These are imported trees from Japan. And while I'm here, talk about sowing seeds. I've just taken the lids off these seed trays and look at it, millions of maple seedlings. This is our small leaf maple. So when people say to me, they have trouble germinating seeds, there is no excuse. 
there's literally millions of seedlings that have sprouted up and all we do is we put them in the seed trays and we leave them out throughout the winter for the frost to stratify it and in the spring in March they germinate so how lovely is that just to show you how the leaves of maples emerge there's a slight difference in timing like this is another of our homemade deshojos made from a garden tree and this is a little bit behind and these are other maples again they've been in the shade tunnel only protected by the netting so they do get frozen and they are this color that one i think is probably a say again i'm not sure because the color is a slightly different red it's more of a pinky color compared to these you see how it is distinctly different the shoujo is a very vibrant red and if i can remind you again if you let the day shoujos or most of the red leafed maples emerge in the open they stay a red like this for a longer period if you try to let it emerge in the greenhouse they turn dark dusky red almost purple in a very short space of time these are our ordinary mountain maples and they have been in the shade tunnel exposed to the frost but not the overhead frost and they are coming into leaf as well these are our seeds again some of them are emerging i can see only some these are korean hornbeams one or two coming up japanese hornbeam korean hornbeam this is a tree that i don't often show this is an english helm elm that i made back in 1986 i dug it out of our hedge and after 38 years this is what it looks like it is absolutely huge see the size of it compared to the bench it is every bit four foot six inches high maybe 1.5 meter tall beech trees are the last to come into leaf so this is a japanese white beech it hasn't dropped the old leaves and the new leaves usually come in the third week in april this is one of the dark leafed crab apples and more of our larches that we use for making bonsai and for making forests ginkgos haven't started leafing yet so that's different this larch is in full leaf in between the noise of the aeroplanes you can hear the birds singing in this mighty oak tree there are a lot of birds and this is the mag not magnolia this is a camellia that we have planted beside the hedge plants are beginning to wake up and if i can show you the great big Exocorda, the bride. This was a garden shrub that I planted about 30 years ago. And you saw the video I did last year where I pruned it back and I'm going to dig it out, possibly with the digger. And look at the shoots coming out from the old wood. It is bursting away. So I'm looking forward to making a nice bonsai out of this one. I will have to learn to ignore the aeroplane noise I'm sure a lot of you have learned to live with it just as I have so let's show you the trees hopefully the trees will be a distraction two weeks ago this larch was not even showing any signs of leaf and lo and behold two weeks later it is absolutely covered absolutely covered with these beautiful green shoots let me walk and show you some of the other flowering plants. I was looking at the video again, which I did on the 7th of March. These crab apples weren't showing any signs of growth. 
but here you are they're bursting and they're almost about to bloom about to bloom how beautiful is that they all are they all are about to bloom and this is that mighty forsythia which has a i would say like 15 to 18 inch nebari at the base and this is the plant that has the trunk rotted away simply by the wood rotting and no carving done to it at all each year it improves and looks better and better there's another one on the side not so large and these delightful fuji cherry are in bloom in fact they've been in bloom for more than a month they started off in bud but they're still hanging on to the flowers can't help showing you this beautiful day shoujo. This is a plant that we made from one of our field grown trees. Taken about 30 years to produce, but there you go. These are styled here by Kevin, most of them, but they come from Japan. Another large De Shoujo. That one is about 90 centimeter or meter tall. I'll take it from the other side as well. Some maples haven't come into leaf, but these ones have come into leaf. They're mainly Katsura and they have been in the open all winter. But this year our maples have not suffered hard frost because We've had a relatively mild winter, very wet winter, but mild. So they've come out in leaf early. Another of our Forsythia stumps. Amazing what you can find in the hedges. We have an ornamental hedge where we plant all sorts of things. But when we come to uh, growing more plants on the land, we remove some of the hedges. And this is what we get out of it. sun is beginning to shine so the light is a bit better even if you can't buy them just enjoy the view these are all mighty junipers that is not carved that is all natural wood natural wood no carving at all They show yours. How beautiful is that? And this is the large they showed you, meter tall. Look at that nebari. That nebari is about a foot across. The pot is over 60 centimeter. I think that pot is about 70 centimeter long. Look at it compared to those junipers. Those junipers are 60 centimeter high. I can safely say that we probably have the most and the best junipers in the country. Not just one or two, but about 50 of them. We've been building up the juniper collection, refining them, and quite a few have sold last year, but we keep refining the ones that have been grown on the nursery to get old and big. The 
very big ones I've had for about 20 or 30 years. We grow them large and then they're refined. So we have more in the field. But we do not sell the unmade ones because we make these ourselves. I'll just show you this large maple. This is one that we made from a field grown tree. Look at that Nibari. It is enormous. It's more than two foot in width. This maple too has been out in the open all winter, not protected. Let's hope we don't get a late frost because a late frost could damage the leaves very badly. These Kojo no Mai have almost finished flowering and that's why all the leaves are beginning to appear. The flowers come first and then the leaves after. These junipers remind me of these mighty old pines that you find in the English and Scottish uh, countryside. It's only at the entrance area and this is not even a tenth of the nursery. These are primulas or primroses for those of you who don't know what these English flowers are. So they always bloom at this time of the year. The purpose of bringing you here is really to show you some of these trees. This is a dishojo that I've been growing in the ground and in five years it has grown from I think 60 a centimeter to about 2.5 meters over 8 to 10 feet tall. And behind there, there's a crab apple that I grew from seed about 10 or 15 years ago. That also is like four meter tall and it's covered in blossom. These are very easy to sow from seed. If you sow a little crab apple seed, you'll get about five to 10 seedlings pop up. And this was just a seedling. But the real purpose of coming here is to show you this Prunus persica meldred. Prunus persica is, I think, a peach, ornamental peach. Beautiful, beautiful double red flowers. I planted it only a year ago. The trunk is only like finger thick, but when it gets thick and old, we grow these trees for cutting the branches for flower arranging. So I'm going to show you a white one, which I have. And that one is double white. So let me switch the camera off and take you there. I have quite a few camellias on the nursery, but I have so many, I can't, I can't remember the names of these different varieties. 
camellia like the magnolia gets affected by frost so if you have a hard frost they turn brown and they don't look so nice I'm in my vegetable garden really and these are my rhubarb plants rhubarb is a beautiful um, plant which we use for making rhubarb pie and this is a rhubarb jar I didn't cover it this year if you cover it up you get the stems of the rhubarb a delicate pink color rather than hard and green that magnolia has almost finished flowering that is a stellata and the stellata is the star magnolia when it first opens it's purple in color and I'll show you some bonsai that we have of this particular plant so this is the star magnolia this has been planted in the ground for the last 15 years so I'm continuing my walk it's only about three or four o'clock in the afternoon and the sun is quite bright and we are just enjoying all this lovely spring foliage and spring color these are the new larch cones it's a really old tree I love the lichen I haven't got the heart to remove it I did remove some but I leave some on because people are absolutely um, intrigued by how it can grow with all that lichen on what a lovely sight I'm going to conclude this video on this equinox day by walking in the evening let me listen to the birds sing and look at a bit of the sunset <laughs>